Got another question for the harder titrations playlist. So this one's number eight. The link to the question is in the description of the video. So if you want to download the question, have a go and then play on when you're ready for the answers. Okay, so I'll make a start. So you'll notice I've got my trusty diagram on the screen already with some information already on. So what's the student done? They have dissolved that many grams of glutaric acid into some water. That's obviously being transferred into this volumetric flask, 250 cm cubed, and then 25 cm cubed being taken out and put into the conical flask. So the acid is in the flask to start with, and then they've titrated that using this sodium hydroxide solution with that concentration. So part A, the colour change, well remember we said the acid was in the flask to start with, the sodium hydroxide is added, so it's going to start off as colourless because phenolphthalein is colourless in acid when all of the acids has been neutralised and you get that drop of alkali with nothing to react with, it's going to go pink. So it's a colourless to pink colour change. Moving on to the titres, the important thing to say here is the titres must be recorded to the nearest 0.05 centimetres cubed. So there's the four numbers there, but you must have these zeros here. And obviously that needs to be there as well. Why does the student carry out a trial titration? Well, a trial titration gives you an estimate of the titer or it gives you a rough idea of the titer. Next part, we've got to calculate the mean titer the student should use for the analysis of the results. So the first thing to point out is you never ever use the trial result, so we're going to ignore that. And we only base the mean on the concordant results. So they are results to within 0.1 of each other. So you can see that these are concordant. This one's just that little bit too different. So we're going to base the mean on those two. So obviously the mean of those two is 18.25. Next part, we've got to calculate the percentage uncertainty in the titer for titration 1. Remember that had a value of 18.05 centimetres cubed. Okay, so the thing to bear in mind here is the uncertainty is present in each burette reading. So there was an initial burette reading and there was a final burette reading. So the titer is obviously the difference between those. So the uncertainty, this plus or minus 0.05 cm cubed, needs to be doubled. And we're going to divide that by the measured value, so the 18.05, and multiply it by 100 to turn it into a percentage, which gives an answer of 0.55%. So don't forget about that doubling, because the titer is based on two burette readings. So moving on to the main part of the question now, the titration calculation, where we've got to find the value of N in glutaric acid. Let's give it the nearest whole number. I'm going back to my diagram, and I'll just do the calculation on here. So if you think about what we're aiming for in the uh, question or the calculation, if we can calculate the MR of this thing here, we can take off what we do know about it. So it's got these two COH groups, and then the remaining mass, so obviously... Uh, the mass of the N, lots of CH2, so we can get the value of N from that. So that's the sort of plan of attack. Okay, so we calculated in a previous question the mean titer was 18.25 centimetres cubed. So the first thing we're going to do is work out the moles of sodium hydroxide that was used in the titration, concentration, times volume, but remember that's got to be in decimetres cubed. So that's coming out at 4.38 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. Now going to use the ratio, the mole ratio, in the balanced equation. So we can see we know that. We want to know how many moles of acid we've got in here. Well, it's going to be half as many. That's coming out there at 2.19 times 10 to the minus 3. So if we go back this way, we want to find out the moles of glutaric acid in the volumetric flask. 250 cm cubed, which is effectively the moles in that 2.891 grams. So how do the volumes compare? That's a tenth of that, so there'll be 10 times as many moles of acid in here. So we just take the um, power to 10 to the minus 2. So now we know that there's 
2.19 times 10 to the minus 2 moles of glutaric acid in that mass, we can work out the MR. That's coming out at 132. So now we need to take off the mass of the bits we know, so the two COOH groups. So they have a combined MR of 90. So that means the CH2N part of the formula has an MR of 42. So how many 14s go into 42? 3. So N equals 3. So moving on to the final part now, so we've got this um, student who's washed the pipette out with water instead of the glutaric acid solution. So obviously you're meant to wash these things out with the solution that's going to go into it, but the student hasn't, they've, they've used water. So imagine there's a tiny bit of water in the bulb there. So what will, they be, what will be the knock-on effect on the titra? Well, if you think about the glutaric acid the student's going to have measured out in there, it's going to have slightly less moles of glutaric acid in than it should have. So the acid is slightly more dilute or slightly less concentrated. So what's going to be the knock-on effect of the titra if you haven't got as many moles of acid in the titration? Well, the titra is going to be lower, isn't it? You're not going to need as much sodium hydroxide to neutralise the acid.